Well, today on Nation, the Window Cleaners podcast, we talk all about time management. How do you do it? How do you keep time? How do you make things work? So if you have a small business, any type of small business, this is a great episode for you. So stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What's up? How's it going? If it's your first time here, take a look around. Hopefully you like it. You got 150 plus episodes to follow up on. This is a weekly podcast we've been doing now for years. Yes, years. So go back, binge away. If you're a new, uh, not a new listener, go back and listen to all the episodes. If you haven't yet, give those videos a thumbs up on Facebook, of course, or on YouTube, of course, comment, all that fun stuff that's cliche. Uh, but most importantly, Give me a call to order your supplies. Uh, you guys have been doing so absolutely amazing. I mean, um, really, really. If you order your supplies through me and you always order your supplies through me, I truly, truly appreciate it, guys. Even if you're not watching the podcast, uh, you're taking a break, you're too busy, whatever. I love it that you guys order through me. It's really how I make my cheddar. So virtual high five to all of you. Uh, and if you want to be awesome and you want to be part of the nation, All you need to do is give me a call or shoot me a text. Even better, 862-312-2026. That's 862-312-2026. That's my number. Call me. Order through me because you're epic. At the end of the show, I'm going to give you a code for 5% off. Got it? Got it. Well, I have so many things. I actually had to delete some names. Um, I just was adding and adding and adding and thought oh, it'd be kind of fun to have a bunch of names and it just was too many names. So I'm just going to give a few shout outs today. Uh, Dr- Adam Dreyer, what's going on, man? Sean Herring, of course, the man. Steve Carlson, Carlson, who's a longtime listener and uh, he's a first time order. So he is one of the nation now. He's one of the cool kids. Thanks, Steve Carlson. Uh, Stephen Payel, Kyle uh, Claver, Claver. Sorry, Kyle, probably butchered your name there. There, uh, Kale Adams, what's up, man? And of course, Mr. Mac himself. Um, but anyway, if you want to order again, give me a shout and uh, hopefully I can get you. If I order with me and I'm not giving you a shout out, I'm sorry. Hundreds of orders a week and uh, I just can't put everybody in there. I try to get you in. I try to do new names all the time. 15 minutes of fame is over. But anyway, <laughs> but today we are actually doing a video uh, podcast idea from Brad Smith. And it's managing time. This is a super, super important one because there's only so much of you. And by the way, if you got an idea for a podcast, all you need to do is let me know. Uh, shoot me a text with the podcast idea or an email at jersey at windowcleaner.com or any of those. But time management in general is how you step up to the next level, right? When you're a small business, there's only so much of you and you are your best employee. Always, Right? Because your your HR, your marketing, your web development, your sales, your everything. So you and your position is super, super, super valuable. The problem is, is that some of us all of a sudden catch ourselves doing 12, 14 hour days. That's not why we got into business. No one is out there doing 12 and 14 hour days of solid productivity. There's just, if you are, then you way past the hiring stage, you need to get somebody else in there. But a lot of times, a lot of times, it's when you think you're doing what you need to do, you step back and look at it, or you go through a bunch of these ideas that we're going to talk about, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, like I got so much more done, and it's like six hours instead of 14. You realize it's not as efficient without a little bit of planning. And you guys know that I love the planning side of it and I like the scheduling-ish and uh, structure and systems. All that stuff makes for a really, really healthy business. And by the way, I had a conversation with somebody and I forgot your name, I'm sorry. We're talking about business and I'm gonna give you a quote. Uh, Not a quote, just something, an idea, something to rattle around. But the size of your business is to impress others where the strength of your business is to impress yourself. Now, let me explain on that. I would 100,000 billion trillion percent rather have a strong business that just runs like an ATM, just makes me money. The systems are absolutely rock solid. It's just the strongest company I could have over a company that just happens to be big. 
because I've had both of them. When we were a big company, a lot of times people go, man, it just doesn't translate. I got all these guys, you know, I got a dozen, two dozen, 30 guys, and I'm not making that much more than I ever did before. Well, something's wrong, first off. You should be making more per person you add on. But the problem is, is that your efficiencies lose the farther you get, the bigger you get. Now, I know of companies who are, you know, two dozen employees and they're super, super, super strong. Those guys are just making a mint. But there's more people who have big companies who kind of let that slip. They let that time management slip. They let the, the systems themselves not really be as structured. They don't have time to do all that. And that's what we're talking about today, is having the time for that. I'm going to tell you, uh, probably two years before I sold, before I moved, I decided that I was getting into, like, systems just weren't working. I needed to get tighter. I needed to structure everything. And I kind of came up with this idea. Now, if you talk to uh, big CEOs of companies and things like that, they have a secretary or an office assistant or whatever. And those people keep a super, super, super tight schedule. At 8.15, you have a meeting. And that'll go till 8.45. At 8.45, you'll have, Right? The big guys, you see it in movies, it's really how it is. They need to have structure. And I thought, why not do the exact same thing? Why do students go with such a time structure? Why do executives go in with such a time structure? There's got to be something to it. I read a book called Things. Um, That book right there was pretty awesome. And I started following more time management stuff. There's a bunch of books out there. I've read probably four or five, or audio books at least, on time management. And it's a really, really cool idea. It's to structure everything that you do to a T. I mean, we're even gonna talk about some weird things to time and structure in there. But if you don't, what happens is, and this is what all of us do as business owners, we all have ADD. So for the most part, if I don't do something or have a timing or a date or a something, I'm gonna lose it. I'm gonna just forget about it and it's not gonna get done. And I'm not going to be productive. Even though I go, man, I was so busy today. Yeah, but in there, really, you probably maybe got onto YouTube because you had to do some comments. And then comments led to, hey, look at that suggested video. I watched that video. I got into another video, maybe another video. Then I'm like, ah, I got to get off that. I'll go uh, make sure my Facebook page is good. And then all of a sudden, you're on your personal, right? You lose some of that because you have ADD. That's a great thing that a lot of us business owners have. And by the way, if you're watching on YouTube or even if you're listening, if you have ADD, comment down below and tell me how you you handle it. I'm telling you, in most cases, it is not great to have. But in small business, it's great because you always got five, six things in your plate at one time. And it's more comforting to kind of go about it. But the big thing I learned is structuring my time. I go through every 15 minutes of my day, even now. Now, I don't even own a business anymore, but just with the sales and media and everything that I do now, I structure it to a 15-minute increment. Every 15 minutes, I have a little sheet and it's on my monitor and it shows me exactly what I'm doing at what time. And the real reason is, is eventually you start understanding where you are during the day. But if I ever get sidetracked, and you have before, you're doing something, all of a sudden you're watching a cat video on YouTube, and you're like, oh, turn it off, look right at your thing, go, okay, what's the time now? It's 10.30, my 10.30 slot says I should be doing this, get on it. It's how you rewire yourself. It's how you get back on track without having to think. Thinking takes time. Thinking really, really does take time. Now, figure this. If you are off on the YouTube or Facebook uh, train, you, you, you know, maybe all of a sudden it's 10 minutes later, you're, you're not focused. You get back on and then you sit there for a second. Like, okay, okay, I got to get, get to work. Okay. <sighs> all right. Okay. Get to work. What am I doing? What should I do? Uh, let's see here. Um, right. All of a sudden now you're thinking of things. Instead, I can just look at it and go 1030 up. I'm on email blast. I'm on it, right? So structure your day down to 15 minutes. I know it sounds like such a dumb thing, but I'm telling you, we're taking what our brains do now and we're focusing it, right? If you know the floodlight laser, that type of thing, I could shoot a laser, powerful enough laser, and touch an airplane flying in the sky or a mountain on the other side or a canyon or the clouds or whatever. 
lasers go super far. Why? Because they're focused. A floodlight can't go very far. No matter how strong the floodlight is, it just doesn't go very far. If you start focusing a floodlight, it turns into a spotlight, right? So focus for us is how we can get farther than we can with a floodlight. And focusing, if you go to each item, you think, well, I got to be running. I got to have five things going at one time. If you're doing five things, that means you can only give each of them. If you're doing equal parts and you're not, you never are. You can only give each part 20%. Right? So it's going to take you five times longer because you still only have 100% of you. But what if you gave each item 100% of your time, 100% of your focus? That, that job or task would get done five times faster. Right? So that's why we do that. That's why we schedule those hours so we can focus back in. I've done it. I'm telling you, it is an amazing, amazing thing. But what kind of stuff are you going to schedule? So I make an hourly calendar. That's what I call it. But that hourly slip, I make that and that goes for every single day. So things that are in there for me are um, uh, email blasts and buffer loops or buffer posts. And um, I have comments on videos and checking some of my media, right? For you, if you have a YouTube page for your business, you're commenting or you're searching or if you are commenting on other videos to get people to engage with you or uh, Facebook uh, pages, um, you know, all that stuff can be put on there. And if you're doing Facebook marketing or Facebook, uh, replies or any of that, maybe, maybe once a month or once an hour or once every two hours, you have a 15 minute slot due to media. And that means you go through Facebook. If there's no comments, you go through YouTube. If there's no comments, you go through, right. Maybe you have to do it that much, but only can, depends on how much you actually have to put into it. A lot of people can do it once a day. But having all that into that hourly 15-minute calendar keeps you on track. Now, in that calendar, in the hourly calendar, there's also a weekly calendar or weekly schedule, if you will. And that is once a week, I do a Craigslist. I do a post for services and small, small business. I do an employee one, whatever it is. I do a Craigslist once a week. I do a... Um, uh, few different things from uh, hiring to, uh, and again, now is different than when I was back then, but um, say you have to send your hours into payroll once a week, or you have to submit things to the government. Any of those things that take that once a week, that slot, slot is just a weekly slot. Every one of those things I have, something I do, my weekly slot is usually about a half an hour. So I put in my daily hour, I put half an hour slot for the weekly and that changes every single day. So only once a week, I'm going to do Craigslist only once a week. I'm going to do some of these bigger things It may be different for you, but scheduling in the weekly different than the hourly keeps you on track. One of the biggest things that I noticed when I went to regular postings and regular renewing on my Facebook ads or uh, you, uh, geez, Craigslist ads is there was a huge response difference. When I, that was just part of my daily thing. Every Monday we do a new post. We do a new post and we renew any post that we can. Keep going, boom, boom, boom. It always keeps you fresh in different, different venues. It's really nice to do. So maybe you have something that you can think of that only needs to be done maybe once a week, but you need to schedule that into your hourly to do it once a week. It's, uh, it's, it's important and it sounds ludicrous, but you can do all of that in those calendars. Uh, another calendar that I have or schedule is the marketing calendar. We've talked about that I don't know how many times. The marketing calendar is huge. Not only is it huge just to make sure that everything's on track to where it's supposed to be, but your printing then can be done properly. Your um, you know uh, uh, mailers can be bundled. You can do all that based on a marketing calendar. And a big thing with the marketing calendar is if you don't do a marketing calendar, you will not market when you're busy. It's just a fact. Because what happens is you become too busy. And when you're too busy, you're too busy for a lot of things and you're so busy that marketing is not one of them. But remember, you need to market more when you're busy than when you're not. Because it's in people's brain. I would 100% rather book more jobs in June and fill out July then try to market in July to fill July. 
right? And by the way, let me just break for a second and say, I hope all of you guys are starting to just really, really kill it. Uh, it really seems like we're all just on the right track. So I hope you are booked out that far regardless. Uh, if you are watching this later down the road, it is 2020 right now and we're in the middle coming out of this COVID stuff. If you didn't go through business in it, uh, be happy that you didn't. But either way, hope you guys are all back on track. Um, those are the calendars. Those are the lists and the schedules that you really need to do. And marketing, you need to do all of that marketing. And your marketing is mail, but it's also, um, you know, email blasts. It's also whatever. That all has to be listed there in the marketing calendar of when it's going to happen. Say once a week you do an email blast. Some of you are going, oh, that's too much. Do once a month, right? And once a month, that means you're going to send one in, in April and the next time is going to be May. May is window season. April may still be gutter season. You may, whatever you do and however you decide to do it, put it in the marketing calendar and make sure that it gets done. Those are the big ones. Those are the big calendars. Your hourly, again, every 15 minutes. Your um, uh, weekly calendar, which is the thing that gets done once a week, but each thing is on a different day so that it gets done and you have the time. And then your marketing calendar. Those are the big ones. But with calendars, you say, well, how do I put them on? What calendars are best? What should I do? And I'll tell you the truth. I do spreadsheets for my hourly, my weekly, and um, my marketing. I do all of those because I print them up. They're, they're basic. I don't need to be prompted because they're regular. All of that is on spreadsheets. I use Google Sheets. It's a free spreadsheet program if you haven't used it. And I just put it all on there. I put all the dates for the marketing by week and date, and I put it all out there. So I could tell you that you know in um, October... Third, I could tell you what happens that week in a marketing calendar because I know. Now, again, one thing to talk about on the marketing calendar is you have to make it kind of liquid because that marketing calendar can move depending on where your weather is. Like Colorado just got snow in June. You know, there's a part of it up in the high country. So you kind of can't really, you know, rain. If rain's really happening and happening and happening and happening and happening, it's going to be a little harder to kind of go in. So make that liquid, but move the whole block over. So, you know, if you all of a sudden think you're going to start June 1st, but you don't start till June 15th or May or April or whatever, just move that whole block and it stays on the schedule contingent to that first date. Those are spreadsheets. Again, Google Sheets is really a good, a good option for that. But there are a lot of apps and I use apps for a lot of the to-do list stuff that I put on before the calendars. And to-do lists are just as important to get stuff done because I will schedule to-do list stuff once a day. And I'll usually give it more time, usually like an hour, hour and a half for my to-do list stuff. But now what happens is when I get to that time, I'm like, okay, usually about say four. Four is my to-do list. I look at this, oh, it's four o'clock, I gotta put my to-do. My to-do list is always being entered in. So no matter what other time of the day, I have an idea pop into my head instead of like, oh man, I gotta do this right now. I put it in my to-do list. Because then when I'm slated to do that stuff, I take care of it. Now, yes, sometimes you, oh man, I forgot to send my my government, you know, my, my uh, taxes or my, sometimes you have to break that, but try really hard not to. If you're behind or late or missing on something, if you do it at four o'clock because you're slated to, or you do it at 10 because that's when you thought about it, four o'clock's fine. So make sure to do that. But some of the apps that I like, uh, I use Microsoft um, To Do. That was actually switched from Wonderlist. Wonderlist was a good one. Uh, and then there is also just a to do list on your Apple device. Uh, if you use all Apple, it kind of translates to everything. And then things is another big one. Things is, uh, you kind of like, I don't know how to explain it, almost rate items in their importance uh, and their urgency. So look at those ones. I like simple. Simple is better. I like to be able to just take stuff, throw it in a list. No matter where I am, you always have your phone on you. So get an app for that. Throw it in the to-do list and you always get things done. I've had simple stuff. I've had bad, like I've been sitting there and gone, oh my gosh, I forgot to I gotta empty these garbages are bad. Throw it in the to-do list, right? 
Throw anything you can think of on the to-do list. And I'm telling you, you'll fill up that hour each time. If you're not a big to-do list person, you can't fill that time, shrink it on the calendar. Maybe you only need a half hour to do your to-dos, right? Send thank you card to Mrs. Jones who referred us. Throw it in your to-do list. Simple things. Your to-do list is the junk drawer of your time management. Anything and everything you can think of, do it in the to-do list. And make a slot for it. I usually end my day with to-dos because then I feel like all those little things get done before the end of the day. Because there's a lot of times you're like, oh, I just got to get this done before the end of the day, right? And then if you put stuff in your to-do list, say you do your to-do list at 10 in the morning, but you put something in three in the afternoon, it's not going to get done until the next day. So I do the to-do list at the end of the day. But it really, really, really helps having that to-do list. Another thing with scheduling that a lot of people don't think about is that when you schedule stuff, you have to schedule time waste. You have to, we call it succubus, right? You have to schedule a crappy time because your brain's still going to want to do that. So what I do is for my lunch, everybody's like, you take lunch? I work through lunch. Okay, great. Well, I still can beat your efficiency, I'm pretty sure. But if you take a lunch, take a little longer lunch. Put a 30 minute in there, 45 minutes in there where I eat like keto. So, I mean, my lunches are not exciting, but I make it a little bit longer because again, then I can eat and have 15, maybe 20 minutes of just like searching around, whatever, you know, if you're just messing around on, um, you know, YouTube, Facebook, whatever, and it's not work related, well then that's fine. You have that time to kind of do that. If you don't put it in there, you'll end up falling off your, your schedule and doing that, you need to kind of have that little bit of a fix. The other thing is a lot of us, a lot of us are actually um, um, almost addicted, you know, to that. So we have to have it in our repertoire. We have to do this stuff. So if you don't, if you don't schedule it, you don't get it done. All of a sudden you start finding yourself at 10 in the morning doing it, right? So schedule time waste. I'm telling you, put it in your lunch, make your lunch a little bit longer. Uh, the other thing I do with lunches is, is if you have a 45 minute slot for lunch, that's when you can do meetings. If somebody wants to meet with you, uh, I know a bunch of other business owners that we like to meet. We like to kind of once a while, like, Hey, you want to grab a bite? I do it during those times. And we always joke that we know how long the lunch is. So take a, you know, our lunch will be 45 minutes and back at the office. Or if you got an hour lunch or whatever your timing is, make sure to schedule that. If you schedule it, it won't break your schedule, right? If you don't plan for something, it breaks your schedule. And that's the hard part. Time management. The hardest part of that is that if you don't, uh, if, if something comes up that you didn't plan for, it ruins the whole thing. I've had times where I had a sick daughter and I missed half of a day. And that's absolutely gonna happen. You can't really schedule for that. So you don't, that's not necessarily going to ruin your day. You're just not going to be productive that day. But if you have something that comes up relatively often, but you think, ah, man, I just got to stop doing that. But it keeps happening and happening, happening. Schedule it. Schedule that time. One of the big things with call center people, which again, in the time management stuff, I've done sales time management and everything. And we don't necessarily do this, of course, but there are people who have blocks of calls. I got to make 20 calls, like car dealers, that kind of thing. They got to make X amount of calls. So what they do is they'll try to make calls throughout the day. But if you block off a time, you could do a 20 call worth of work in, you know, 45 minutes or an hour. If you turn everything else off, close your door in your office and just call. That's what you're focused on right then and there. You'll get it done. And this is what time management is. It makes those big things that take all day and fill up your time laser focused it can get done so much faster now if all your calls are done in 45 minutes you got the rest of the day for the rest of the stuff boom i'm done what do i do now what do i do now what do i do now right sometimes there's also things on my calendar or schedule that uh, get done earlier you know i don't have as many of one thing or the whatever then maybe that's where you schedule your time suck you know, maybe you put on bonus things. I always have bonus items, which my bonus items to do list, because I always have enough stuff in the to do list. So if I get done with something, and I still got 15 minute block. I can either, you know, mess around on regular Facebook or check the forums or whatever, 
or I can go on my to-do list also before I even get there. So some things to think about. Again, our big focus on time management is to laser focus. It's to get you dialed in to being more productive. Because again, there's only so much of your time. There's only so much of you. You have 100% of your time. What if you do more? It's like it's like the water fed system. By the way, you don't need to tell me that water fed is fake or whatever. I've used water fed for 10 years. And in my opinion, my humble opinion, water fed is one of those things that I can do twice the work with water fed that I can with a squeegee. So if I can take and if I'm only by myself and don't have any employees, I got eight hours, let's say. I still want to have a family. I still want to have a life. I have eight hours. Put eight hours. What if I could do five jobs in eight hours or I could do 10 jobs in eight hours? That's productivity. That's being more efficient. And that's where time management comes into. A lot of us, and if you're out in the field, that has to be scheduled in also, right? A lot of us have issues because we are out in the field. Maybe you're an owner operator where I know guys who are doing half days out in the field still, and then they come back and they're scrambling for everything because they're out in the field days. They're letting stuff fall. Getting bids done. If you're out in the field, that should always get done. If somebody calls, your phone should be answered 100% of the time, all the time, if possible. I know it's very hard, and if it's not possible, get an answering service because if you are not answering your phone, you're in business to go out of business. Now, with that being said, if you call me, you know I'm on the phone almost all day. I work from you know 8.15 in the morning, which is when we start our meeting, uh, and 10 is when I kind of start to get in, and I go all the way until 11 o'clock at night on chat from 5 to 11. Now, there's certain things that I do and don't do uh, during those times, but those are our overall hours, and I'm on the phone a lot of the time, so... People call and don't get through and then they leave a message and it takes longer to find a message and a text. So there's a lot of those things where it's like, okay, you can't necessarily answer all of the calls all the time. But if you're having that problem, get an answering service. That could be very, very beneficial for a small business because remember, if somebody doesn't hear from you or you don't answer, they're going to go to the next guy. Most people aren't going to like you so much. And we all have those clients, especially new people. Nobody's going to be like, well, I want to try this guy. Ring, 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 ring. No answer. Huh? All right. Next one in the book. Next one on the internet. Next one on the, right? Maybe they even leave you a message, but they still call somebody else. The other person answers before you even listen to the message. They've already booked service with somebody else. So when you call, they go, oh, no, nope, don't worry about it. I got a different company. How many times have you heard that? You missed it. You missed the job. You missed the money. You missed the new client. A client's going to last you potentially ever. 10 years. That client. Say it's a $200 every six months for 10 years. That's $400 a year. 10 years of that. That's a $4,000 missed call. You know? Something to think about. Uh, But another thing that you can do to kind of help everything, and this is probably one of my favorite uh, overall hacks or tricks, is automate. People go, well, automate. I don't build cars. How do I automate? You can automate emails. Buffer, check out Buffer if you haven't. That's a social media uh, one where you have Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all of those things. You make all the posts. You can do a bunch of different posts or a few of the different ones, different time slots, everything. Once a day, it takes you 15 minutes to put it in there. Now all of a sudden, you have posts going out on all your social media things twice or three times a day. You're always ahead if you're doing that through a push program. Now you don't have to stop your day to do that. How efficient is that? Say you want to do emails once a week. Say you want to do emails once a month, whatever. Once a week, once a month, you put down all your emails, you write them all out, you load them all up, and something like a constant contact, MailChimp, whatever, those just send it out. You don't ever have to worry about it anymore. By the way, I think it's MailChimp is free to a certain degree. That rhymed, sorry. Uh, But check it out. Again, you can schedule emails. That's automating. You can, and this is probably one of the bigger ones, is get uh, a website guy like Justin Monk. You guys have heard me talk about him. Search him on Facebook or uh, Monk SEO. It's uh, M-O-N-K and then S-E-O. Monk SEO, somebody like that. You can send pictures and they push pictures once a month. 
You can send them stuff and all you have to do is just get it into a load and hey, put these on the site. They do all that. Say, I'm just looking to load this once or twice. The SEO work, they can automate that. They can do the SEO. They can take the entire side of things, which by the way, website marketing and all of that side of your website is probably the biggest way you're going to get traffic next to referrals. The biggest hat, the most burden, the most amount of money you can make, give it to somebody else. Give it to Monk and tell Monk I said hi. Tell him you heard about it, uh, him on uh, Jersey, from Jersey on WCR Nation because I always like to know him to know. He literally, literally has changed the scope of business for us. He just, it's taken such a burden off and does a better job than I ever could. I don't know how, and I don't want to know how. It's like a mechanic. I don't know. I don't know how my phone works, and I don't want to know how. I want to be ignorant and just have it work. That's why you hire a guy like Monk SEO. Search him on Facebook. I don't have his number handy. Like I said, I'm not uh, affiliated. He's just a, a friend, and he's done so much work for me. That's just been amazing. Check him out. Monk SEO. Anyway, but having those kind of guys, having those automations and those things happening takes the load off your plate, and that's what we're doing. It allows you to focus on the rest of it. So just to kind of go over it again, make sure you're doing an hourly, every 15 minute schedule for your day. You're doing a weekly schedule, a thing that happens only once a week. You're doing your marketing calendar. You're automating as much as possible. Make sure to schedule your time wastes. And uh, if you're running software programs, make sure to utilize them as much as possible. So you're not doing more than one thing with every customer. It's totally possible. This is probably, time management is probably one of the hardest things to get into because we're back to structures. A lot of us got into business because we didn't want structure. We didn't want to work for somebody else. And now we're kind of getting back into it. It's pretty difficult. But once you do, I'm telling you, it's just going to blow you away the amount of stuff you can get done. It's pretty crazy. Either way, that's the episode this week. And like I said in the beginning of the show, if you haven't ever ordered from me or if you order every week, my number is 862-312-2026. I promise you, I would love nothing more than to be your rep. So save my number, 862-312-2026. I've beaten it into your heads. But my code this week uh, is going to be Time Vampire or Vampire. You just you just tell me Vampire and you get the code. That is the code for this week. Uh Nothing is worse than a time vampire. Vampire, somebody who sucks the time out of you. Uh, something that you used to do that took way longer than it should. That's the code. You give me that, you get five percent off your entire order plus free shipping. And by the way, I would love to put in orders for you just in general. So do let me do that. Um, thanks for everything, guys. Super virtual high five. Uh, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. But more importantly, until next week, go out there and be epic.